Hey guys, I am Ben Weiss and this is Humans of Flippa. I've got a very special recording to you coming today. I'm joined by both the buyer and the seller of a fantastic e-commerce site went down um, just uh, last uh, March or April, something like that. I think it closed in July. Um, well, let's get to it. Uh, we've got Joe Burrell and the, uh, the broker on the listing and John Chen, who is the buyer. Joe, John, thank you for joining today. Um, really exciting episode of Humans of Flippa because we've got a seller and a buyer with us and we get to kind of like i'm excited to track through the history it, one thing working for flippa that always is quite annoying is we see things we see this like instant success on the platform and then everything disappears and we never you know once in a while people come back and say hi but you know usually we just assume that people are having great success out there one way or the other um you know we don't hear complaints so we assume they must be doing well but it's gonna be really exciting to kind of hear this so um, we're starting. We're talking about um, an e-commerce site called um, what is it? iHeart Posh Shop. Is that right, John? Yeah, it's called iHeart Posh Shop, and I guess I'm, I'm the owner now. So we do plus size clothing for plus size queens, you know, and uh, they have modern, trendy looks. And it's been an incredible ride so far, and it's been less than a year. But um, we can get into the details of the transaction and everything if you want. Yeah, absolutely. So. so <clears throat> So Joe, um, you're one of our like um, I forget, I don't know if we have a real name for it, but you're basically like a super broker on on Flippa. Um, honestly, if if a day goes by that Joe doesn't have a transaction that goes through, it's like a sad day for us because this guy's representing so many businesses right now. Um, I assume back when you sold this one, you weren't selling quite as many, but maybe let's just start quickly. Like, how did you? get connected with the seller and like, what was your first kind of process in working with them, getting this up? Like, what did you like about the business that you're like, oh yeah, I can sell this on Flippa? Yeah, okay. So um, this one was actually given to me by Flippa. Um, I was just sort of starting in my brokering process. Um, uh, I think actually at the time it was one of the biggest sales I had done to date. So it was a pretty exciting deal for me uh, historically um, as a broker and um, uh, I think the, there, were, there were two sellers um, and they were both very um, passionate about the niche and had been running this business for, I think it was like eight, eight to 10 years or something, a yeah, long time. Really and, they, uh, and, and they'd done a really good job with this, but they were just burnt out and they wanted to, they wanted to sell it to someone who they thought would do a good job running it and so on. Um, uh, if memory serves, I actually did struggle to find a buyer with this one. We listed it originally for quite a lot more than what it ended up selling to John. Um, and, you know, they were just motivated to sell. That they, they had enough. Um, in terms of what was good about the business, well, John can probably talk to this, but there was a lot of attractive things. Um, they, uh, they, they even went to the effort of putting together like a, a proper full graphic um, information memorandum, which is like a, a PDF that summarizes the business. Right. Um, and I hadn't, I hadn't seen any. Like I'd worked with a few clients then, but nothing to that level where they had gone to that amount of detail to try and get it sold. So they were really switched on, uh, very uh, motivated sellers, which was great for me as the broker, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so, Of course. And I mean, it sounds like, you know, one the, the first thing that just hit my mind, and John, I'll let you speak to this, but like just hearing that this was, I think you said like an eight-year-old business. I mean, this, this wasn't something that they just built to sell, clearly. And, and yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I had been kind of in the market, just like browsing Flippa and browsing a bunch of things. But um, so I had another business before this that I also bought on Flippa that I grew and then sold on Flippa. So that's how I got Flippa famous, I guess. <laughs> and, um, you know, after I sold it, I took a break for a little bit. And then I got, you know, antsy and I wanted to, to get in it again. So I was browsing stuff and a lot of sites were, um, you know, these drop shipping sites or these sites that were um well my whole thing is i like like paid advertising right social paid social oh, so interesting. facebook instagram you know i guess now like snapchat and tiktok and stuff like that so i wanted a product that um that was more emotional than um than logical because if it was a logical product then you can just go on amazon and search like 
best stapler, then, you know, people just buy the best stapler on the first page or something like that. Uh -huh. So I wanted something that was like emotional. I knew that was like the kind of niche I was in. I had experience with, you know, the jewelry business. So yeah, when, when Joe kind of reached out with it, I was like, this is almost like kind of like too good to be true. And uh, because I knew it was too good to be true, I was like, oh, okay, I have the cash in hand. I'm ready to close on it. Like I was ready to close on it within like a couple of days, to be honest. So I think Joe can speak to that a little bit, but I think it's important when you're a buyer to know that the seller is probably getting a lot of messages like, oh, you know, tell me a little bit. And a lot of them are just, are just like not serious or they're trying to lowball them or something like that. So um, as a buyer who wants to kind of complete the transaction right away, a, a real buyer, I wanted to make it as easy as possible for them to kind of get through the diligence process and everything. So because at the end of the day, like you want the business and they want to sell the business. So you just want to make sure that goes through. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, let's, let's jump into it a little, cause this is something I don't get to hear about too much, but, and you know, Joe's a little different cause he's a broker. He's not, he didn't own the business himself, but you know, what, what did the kind of the like negotiation process, due diligence process look like between the two of you? Was there a lot of chat? Was there, or did you not talk much at all? And did John just say, here's a whole bunch of money, take it. <laughs> No, actually, this one was a bit of an interesting one. So um, we had it listed originally for a certain amount, but that amount included the inventory cost. Um, and what I ended up doing was I, I actually reduced the price or the asking price by the amount that the inventory was, which made it look like a much more attractive deal. And when that happened, um, not only John, I actually had three others who all offered at the same time and so, I don't know, actually, I don't think I even told you this, John. I think you knew that there were other buyers. Yeah, but definitely. They were, they were all very serious buyers and they all put in offers um, oh around God. the same price range as you. Um, and so we had, we actually had lots of options and um, we ended up entering into an LOI with you, which is the, uh, a letter of intent, which is a, a letter of intent to buy the business at a certain price. Um, and so I, I think that was what clinched the deal is that you were, I think you convinced the buyers because I, I gave them a summary of the buyers and they chose you. They would prefer you over the other two. Um, not just Amazing. because the offer was slightly better, but because you you seem to have a little bit more experience with them. And that like that happens a lot with, with Flipper when you have choices. Like I wouldn't have been surprised if they had chosen one of the other buyers if they offered less, because they were those sort of they were their sort of seller, you know. Um, yeah, so that's, that's basically what happened after the LOI, uh, I think it was just a three day period for you to have a look over the business, um, uh, basically move forward with it and the rest was history. It's interesting. So, so John, like once, once you're in that kind of offer period, what, what extra due diligence do you do? And I know, I know this wasn't, this hasn't been your only transaction too. Like what are the kind of like the biggest things that you're just examining to make sure what you're buying is legit, you know, it's what you want. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I probably did a lot less due diligence than I should have, but that's because the business was so attractive. I thought there was a big margin of safety. So I was like, even if like the revenue is like half of what they say it is or whatever, it's not that bad. And my whole thesis for buying the business was not really like the cash flows of the business. It was more about, did you find product market fit so that I could grow it with, you know, paid advertising. So my thought was I'm, I'm getting it at such an attractive price, you know, minus the inventory and everything. It was probably like less than one times one year's cash flow or something like that. But, um, you know, I was like, okay, there's going to be some hairs in there or there's going to be some whatever, like maybe like the cost of goods aren't as low as they say it is, or maybe the ads or whatever, or not ads, but they didn't run any paid ads, but I thought it was just so attractive that I was, I did very little due diligence. I looked through, you know, all the, you know, Google analytics and Shopify and everything, but I was willing to overlook a lot of things. There weren't any major things that I was like, this is like a red flag. <coughs> so, yeah. It's interesting. Uh, you say that, and I'll, I'll throw this one to Joe a little bit. It's something I always tell people, you know, I, I talk to people who are selling on flip all the time and I always tell them like, don't be, scared to admit your like weaknesses right so obviously like john one thing he was looking for is kind of a company that probably either wasn't running ads at all or like straight up said like i have no idea how facebook advertising works and i'm just throwing money around willy-nilly and he's like okay well i want to come in because i know how to do that right. um and joe like i know you're listing like 
I don't know, pro probably at least probably one or two things a week. It seems like these days, like, is that something that you kind of preach to your clients as well? Like it's okay to kind of show that there's, there's places to improve. Cause I feel like a lot of sellers are looking or buyers are looking for that. Yeah. I usually look for that as well. So if I can see something that there is like an opportunity for growth or something that is wrong with the business, I always make sure it's upfront um, just because if something does go wrong in the sale or in the, at that tail end of the transaction, um, everything's out there. The buyer knows what they're getting. Um, this particular business that we're talking about today that didn't really have any of that um, from memory. I, 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 that was part I of guess, the reason why. I, was I guess it was during the pandemic. So like we were mm -hmm. kind of unsure about the future of it and everything, right. but we didn't know it was going to be a boost and not like a negative thing. So that, there was some uncertainty there. And I was like, well, it's fine. Cause like I said, it's not, a, yeah. not a material. Yeah. Well, and if you're buying it, it's something you said around like a one X annual multiple, then if something's right. wrong and all of a sudden it's one and a half X or something like that, that's really still a fantastic valuation. Right, right. I think, so for me, I'm, I'm different from a lot of buyers where I, I think this is a pretty important distinction where a lot of buyers will see a site and look at it as a pure, like, oh, this is like a mathematical investment. Like this is, I get it for two times cash flow or three times cash flow. And this is my yield on my money. And I think generally when you're buying a business that's small, smaller like this, um, you know, not like the million dollar businesses or, or $5 million businesses when it's not a, a real enterprise. When you're buying a business like this, you, I think that's a wrong way to look at it as if, as like a bond or something like that, because you need to put in a lot of like effort and like, um, you know, you have to run the business or you have to grow the business. You can't really stay at where you're at for, for a long time. The thing about e-commerce that I think most people are afraid of is that um, with content sites, the revenue is a little bit more stable, right? Because it's like organic and it's not based on paid traffic. In e-commerce, you'll have these like fly-by-night guys that like find some sort of hot product and then they pump it full of ads and then, you know, it'll do well, maybe do like 100,000 a month for like a couple months. And then all of a sudden like drones don't become hot or like, you know, fidget spinners are out of, out of, um, out of style and stuff like that. So you have to or understand like, slightly. Yeah, or mask or something like that. So it's like, you have to understand when you put a multiple on something, a multiple is just like a shortcut for like a, a discounted cash flow when you like repeat it into forever. So if that revenue and profit's not going to repeat forever, or like, at least like a high visibility for a long period of time, then you can't really put a multiple on it. It's just kind of like revenue or profit or whatever. So that's, I think, one thing that a lot of people don't understand about multiples and stuff like that. Yeah. It's difficult as a broker though to to figure that out. Uh, I right. have to put in. I have I basically to have to put together like a process that values business, taking into consideration all of those factors. Um, right, it's really right. difficult to say. Um, one of those factors I actually have in there is gut feel, <laughs> which basically what? is it's like the it's the wild card, the gut feel, like how oh, I feel, feel about the business. Is it going to be like how do I feel the business is going to do? Um, yeah. So. Yeah, that's what you get. Any anyone who's like all of the, I don't know, you know, like the super users on Flippa. I feel like they buy stuff more off of gut than anything else. Because when yeah. when you're looking at this stuff every single day, I mean, I I can usually, within 15 seconds of looking at a listing, be like, oh yeah, this is gonna this is gonna sell within a week, or like you know, this is right. absolutely worth what it says versus not. <laughs> Interestingly, though, I definitely had that about iHop Shop. When I saw that business, I thought, I thought that, wow, this is a really good one. It's going to sell quickly. Right. And I think it, it didn't. <laughs> that's that's um, actually crazy because I, I saw it. And the big thing about it was that they weren't these like crazy affiliate or like paid advertised marketers like from Russia who just kind of found it. They were just like a husband and wife couple who just put their heart and soul into this business. And it was just a pretty good business. And all the revenue that they had was organic, which was like, you know, pretty good. I was like, oh, if the ads don't work, at least you have something. Right. Yeah, I would, I, that's why I valued it, uh, you know, initially fairly high. And I don't even think it was that, that high, you know. <laughs> I think I did it at like a 24 times multiple or something like that. So mm -hmm. 2x. Yeah, which um, isn't bad at all. No, um, that's, if, I, if, if I ever see um, an e-commerce business on Flippo that's 
making any sort of money that has any sort of cash flow and it's 100 organic like i know that that's going to be popular that's awesome yeah yeah they're rare they're really rare i don't well that's don't why it's extremely rare. rare yeah usually you scroll down to the google analytics section and it's said you know it's usually at least like 70 percent paid which some people are excited about that because they know how to do it but most people are like if it says 55 60 percent organic people are like whoa this is cool <laughs> yeah but to be honest i had actually forgotten uh, that that it was literally right as covid was was you know having an impact on the world i think i think i first came across this business or i came across my desk at like in in like march or late march mm -hmm. um of 2020 and you know that's when things were really starting to turn um, yeah yeah so i think that's why makes sense um, i haven't bought clothes in a year <laughs> so i'm surprised <laughs> people are out there buying dresses right now yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, there was a lot of uncertainty back then. I mean, I think mm. that's when like the markets were tanking and everything and, and all that, so. You bought it at the right I, time, man. <laughs> yeah, I got lucky, yeah. Oh, absolutely, so, so let's jump into it a little bit. Um, and Joe, I don't know, I'm, I'm curious actually what kind of steps you have in the process as a broker once, you know, the buttons click, the money's in escrow. Um, you know, how, how did the transition work? You know, was it pretty simple. John, you're obviously experienced. Joe, you're obviously experienced or back then not quite as experienced, but more so well, than no. a beginner. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I had, um, I had sold many, many sites before I became a broker, my own right. businesses. So I had lots of experience with that side of things, but um, yeah. And uh, but thankfully John and the sellers, they made it super simple. Like I gave the initial direction. So once the money is in escrow, I make the intro. Although the intro had already been done because we had an LOI. So that right. made it a little bit different. Um, so they were already connected and basically they're just off to the races and they, they pretty much managed everything, um, communicated with the, between themselves and sorted it all out. So, you know, I, I didn't really have to do all that much. I just had to make sure that everything was, was done correctly and that the seller and the buyer were both happy when they were, money was released and it was done deal. Awesome. And so for John, how does that work for you? Do you tend to have like kind of like a checklist that you're just making sure all this stuff gets transferred? Because there's, there's so many different, like, there's so many things you can miss, I feel like when you're transferring like a digital business. Oh, yeah. Again, it was very much like, I cared only about like, five to 10 things. And the rest of it, I would like sporadically follow up with them about like, I still don't even know if I have access to the Pinterest account or like stuff like that. <laughs> it's just the main things. Um, but that, that, that was just what I was looking for. You know, there's just so many, I mean, it helped that the seller was super detail oriented and like included a list of everything, oh. including like vendor logins and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, this is super helpful. Yeah, critical. Any, anyone who's watching this now is trying to sell something. That, that's a key note I would say is if you're trying to like get ready to sell your business, put a spreadsheet together that's got like everything that you ever log into on there, everything that you're going to need to transfer over, whether it's your Twitter password or, you know, the info for your hosting account, anything like that. Cause that is, that is uh, pretty critical and can just get lost in the shuffle so easily. Um, so, so what's going on now? <laughs> what did you do? What were your like first steps, John? Like you take over this e-commerce business or selling um, like women's uh, plus size women's clothing. That's what you said, you know, what do you do first? Do you just like kind of sit back and take note of what the heck you've got? Or do you just yeah, have a game I mean, plan you run with? What's going on? For me, there was not a lot of sitting around. I had them ship the inventory to my apartment because I had no no place to put it at the time. And I don't know if you've lived in New York City, but our places are not big. So <laughs> we have uh, like half my room was filled with boxes. I felt, I can show you guys a picture. I have a picture of it, but uh, <laughs> it was, it was, it was a great, it was a great experience because that's what I wanted. I wanted to get back into it and kind of, you know, wake up every day and tap dance to work and just like get into it. So I, I rented like a small office to begin with, like the closest one I could find to me. Um, you know, I started trying doing the purchasing. I did everything. I started running ads. I got, because it was during the pandemic, I got an amazing return on the ad spend, like unbelievable. It was like huh. eight X return on ad spend or something, eight to 10 X return on ad spend. And I was like, this is insane. But I think that was a little bit temporary because during the pandemic, the inventory for ads was higher because everyone was on, like on their phones all the time. Right. So basically like ads were just a lot cheaper because there's so many people on their phones, you know, viewing stuff. Yeah. The, the return has like gone down ever since 
since then, but um, it's been a great experience. Um, we moved to a warehouse in Brooklyn. I hired a couple people. It's been growing very quickly. It feels like, you know, the business is, like, is a rocket ship and I'm just trying to hold on to it. And it's a, it's a different feeling from uh, my first business where I tried everything I could do to like, you know, increase sales and, you know, just try to push and push. And now it just kind of feels like there's a specific niche, there's a specific customer, they want this certain thing. And um, we just try to figure out how to best deliver it. Yeah, that's, that's, it's cool to hear. Like, you know, we, we think I, myself, at least I always think of everything on Flippo as like these purely online organizations, but it essentially sounds like you've got what someone would consider like a real business, <laughs> the warehouse yeah. in Brooklyn and, and people packing up boxes. It's, it's very cool to hear. Yeah, yeah, I had to figure out like payroll and everything. And I was like, this is new, this is crazy. <laughs> yeah, HR, that's a whole new world. Um, are, are you still in touch ever with, uh, with the original owners? Just random questions that arise or anything like that? Uh, I was after the 30 day period, there was like a 30 day period where you could kind of ask them questions. And right. uh, I, I thought I shot them a couple of questions after that, but they were a little uh, less responsive, which I totally understand, right? Like you sold the business, it's not yours, you wanted to get it off your hands. So I didn't try to bother them too much about it, but I'm sure I'll hit them up again, you know, a couple of times. Yeah, absolutely. It makes sense. Uh, do you ever talk to them, Jim? Just curious as a broker. Yeah. How often do you kind of be stay in touch with anyone you've worked with or do they just kind of yeah. get it sold and disappear? Um, so with this particular client, um, I know that they, this was their, this was basically their only business, right? Um, uh, I, I always follow up. So like after a certain period of time, I just check in with them and see how everything's gone. Um, but usually there's not much more than that. Um, if, if it's a, a serial entrepreneur that I know will be, you know, potentially selling another one, then I, I do follow up a bit more, but it's more just like a friendly thing. It's not, um, and, and normally if they want something sold again, then they come to me anyway. So, you know, <laughs> um, not much. Yeah, no, makes sense. Um, no, it's good stuff. So when John's ready to sell this business, are you going to go to Joe to help you do it? <laughs> I mean, yeah, if, if he's, I think this business is going to grow to be a huge business. Um, is it something, do you think you'll end up like, I mean, how, so how long have you had it now? Just less than a, less year, than a year, I guess. I guess we closed in it in July, right? So it's been less so than a year. About eight, eight months or something like that. So, you know, eight months in, you seem really stoked on it. You've obviously got like, you know, it's building. Is this something you're like, maybe I'm going to run this for yeah, you know, 15 years, the rest of my life? Yeah. Or is it like, yeah. hey, I'm just going to grow this and move on? Yeah, I, yeah, I think uh, because of my past history, I'm known as the guy who flips the websites, right? And I guess like, I don't really like that thinking because like, while I did flip the website, but while I was building it, I was very much, everything I thought about was how do I add value to the business long term? So I wasn't thinking about how do I you know, maximize this so I could flip it. I thought about, um, you know, what do I do for customers? And this comes down to like customer service and like packaging and branding and everything, you know, when there's a trade-off between short-term and long-term, I'm always, you know, picking the long-term option, even if it's, you know, lost money in the short-term. And uh, yeah, I think I've fallen in love with the business. Um, you know, I feel pretty grateful for the business. I feel blessed to work on it and you know i'm watching all these old jeff bezos amazon you know old videos and i'm like okay that's gonna be me one day um you know people, Re -re retired as the richest people, man in the world <laughs> yeah, people, well maybe second richest i guess but um yeah like people i guess will watch this and be like oh wow like this is uh this is the old john chen video huh <laughs> <laughs> i love that <laughs> I need to start. I, I, so I'm going to think of these humans of flippers videos. People are going to be like, "Wow, Ben Weiss used to be doing these humans of flippers videos. Look at him now." Yeah, wow, look at him now. Fourth richest man in the world. <laughs> who's who's number three then? Who's going to be number three? I don't know. I I'm, I'm assuming still... someone on Flip was probably going to you know, just. Uh, so it might be right, right, or Bill you know, Gates would stay up there, or whatever. Exactly. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. I mean, I don't know. Elon Musk goes like this. You never know what's what he's going to say on Twitter that. next, but. <laughs> <laughs> it just depends. Maybe Joe. I mean, this guy blowing it up. Um, 
Uh, let me ask you just one more question to Joe and then I'll finish up um, with, with Joe knows the question I was asked with. Uh, I'll just give it to John this time. But um, Joe, you, as I've said a few times, like you've always got a million um, businesses that you're helping broker. You know, wh what do you look for as a broker when you're, you know, looking for someone to work with, looking for someone to sell? Like, what do you, what do you kind of see as like, these are the, these are like, you know, the top couple of things I'm like, yeah, for sure. This is like a great business. This can sell. Um, interestingly, the first thing, uh, the main reason I turn down clients, are the people, the clients themselves, if they are, if I catch them lying or telling me that, that the business does X amount or is doing this. And then if I find out through my due diligence that it doesn't do that, um, like something really obviously not true. And they're trying to cover it up in order to sell it for more. That's a no deal for me. Like that's, that's the most common reason that I turn away clients. The clients that I love to work with the most are the ones that are honest, um, happy to put in the work up front. Cause like it's a bit of work to get the, the data all organized if you, if you don't do it on a regular basis. Um, and so it can take like, you know, one to two weeks to organize all the information. So for me, it's as a broker, it's more about the client. Um, the, the quality of the business can be justified by what valuation we give it. Um, right. So, you know, like if it's, a, if it's not a very good business, that's fine. We just give it a lower valuation. Um, and I'm usually, it's usually pretty obvious. Like um, the ones that typically do really well are the more popular style businesses, like content businesses that have like passive style um, business models. You know, you just put up content, it ranks on Google and then the traffic comes in, money comes in. Um, the, the ones that tend to be a little bit more difficult to sell are the e-commerce ones, um, I find. Um, I don't know if that's just because they're more complicated, more well, most likely, <laughs> um, yeah. but as John has shown, like, you know, there's a lot of opportunity there too. So. Yeah. Um, to me, you know, and I see everything that comes through, I, I think, I think you hit the nail on the head there. It's like con content sites tend to at least seem to be easier in one way or another to at least make a few dollars on without much work. Um, and also e-commerce as you know, John can attest to, he's a guy who loves sites that work because of, you know, well done advertising. It takes money to make money in e-commerce. You know, you're going to have to have cash flow, whereas content, you basically just need some time on your hands and a little bit of knowledge of SEO. Um, but that's interesting that you said the biggest thing is, is the people because um, I get that it is, it is critical. And I, I can't tell you how many, I, I would say deals fall apart the most often on Flippo because people just don't know how to interact as nice human beings with each other. Um, and it's a deal. I know it's the internet and I know we're all used to just clicking a couple of buttons and you can say whatever you want behind, you know, your, your avatar on Reddit or whatever you want, but no, you gotta be a good person if you're going to try to you know, make Well, it's like, it's like this, it's like this, this show, this podcast, it's humans of Flipper. Like there are people behind the computer, you know, you, me, and it's not just another, you know, that, that matters. That's a huge, big part of it. Um, and if there's no connection there or if the person's, a, you know, being really difficult, it makes, it puts so much stress on the deal. And I've seen like you, many deals fall through because of it. Yeah. Um, both on the buyer and the seller side. So I, t I tend to just avoid the sellers who just, I can see that there'll be problems. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good, it's a good outlook. Well, so on that note, on the human, the humans of Flippa, John, I will end with the same question. Joe's already answered this on, on uh, his personal video, which you guys can find somewhere else on this page. Um, John, what does your perfect day look like? Perfect day. Uh, I mean, I mean, I, I feel like I'm living a perfect day. Like I wake up, I go to the gym, you know, I tap dance to work. I take the train one stop, you know, eat lunch, come back, play some basketball and uh, do some reading and go to sleep and do it all over again. So day, life is good. <laughs> I like it. I'm glad Flippa and Joe and everyone could help out with that. Um, guys, this is, it's really cool. I mean, we'll probably have to catch up with you, John, at some point, because I'm, kind of fascinated just to see how far you take this business maybe one day i'll be seeing ads on tv for it or something i don't know next year at the super bowl yeah <laughs> um no seriously thank you guys um thank you guys a lot for joining this has been kind of cool to hear it from both sides so i appreciate it oh, cool. pleasure. thanks thanks guys